What's going on, everyone? Happy Saturday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did, test positive. I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues. It is time now for the Saturday edition of the Pandemic Update for Saturday, February 3rd, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do talk about the ongoing COVID pandemic and any other virus that may be a threat to your health. So if you want to stay informed and learn more about what's going on daily, Give this a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and of course share this with anyone you think needs to see this content. We do have some news stories and some data to talk about today. Not a lot of things going on today, but there are some things that I want to show you today in today's pandemic update. First off, U.S. flu markers show hint of a second wind. Yes, there are some indications that while things were slowing down for flu, they may be starting to go up again. And in here it does say COVID levels are dropping as well. We can't necessarily agree with that. There are some areas, as you know, if you've been following my updates, that are rising once again for COVID. And that is now the case flu as well, where flu is showing some signs that maybe it is starting to rise in isolated areas once again. We'll take a look at some more flu data in just a little bit. Moving on to our next story. Payne College, this is down in Georgia. Payne College reopens after COVID outbreak, but campus population asked to stay masked up. So they were closed for a few days earlier this week in Augusta, Georgia. Now they've reopened, but for the foreseeable future, everyone needs to be masked up. And I was going through the article, and I'm not seeing anything about the type of mask that they should wear. As we all know, the most effective would be N95 or better. Even KN95 is good. Anything's better than those baggy surgical, and especially those cloth masks. No, no. Stay away from the cloth mask. It says all faculty, staff, and students are required to wear protective masks until further notice. And again, I wish it would say high quality masking. It doesn't, but hey, at least they are starting to do masking once again. And they do have 309 students on their campus, so it's saying. All right, moving on to the next story. This is actually some good news. 3.9 million award for Albany Medical College to study long COVID. This is a good thing. We need as many institutions, healthcare systems, colleges, whoever, to study long COVID because we need answers on long COVID. Speaking of long COVID, a new study came out. Nearly one in four American adults who get COVID-19 suffer from long COVID. That's a big deal. It's something we've known about for a while. It's something that is continuing to get worse. Tomorrow, we are going to do a full in-depth review on this uh, study. We're going to go down and look at all the different stats. There's a lot of different state stats, and I figured, you know what? It needs a video of its own. It needs its own dedication. It'll probably be about an eight to 10 minute video where we are going to go through this, but it's something that is significant. It's actually preventing people from going to work in We'll be able to look state by state at what's going on with this. All right, let's take a look at this. Latest COVID shots are 54% effective against symptomatic infection in adults, CDC says. Yeah, the new shot, I mean, while 54%, it's better than being under 50%, it's not very high and it's not the best, but hey, we will take what we can get. Remember, this is not a JN.1 specific um, vaccine maybe we'll get one down the line i'm not hearing anything about that for the spring or summer but hey 54 is better than nothing take what you can get all right taking a look now at the air quality values across the country you're going to see a mixed bag of things especially as we get into the central region and into the west coast you can see the west coast it's not all that bad it's just a few bad um sensors here and there but then when we take a look at what's going on in the Great Lakes region, the upper Midwest. Poor air qualities. Some places are still dealing with some fog in the Dakotas. And those areas are seeing some poor air quality. We also have some poor air quality today across the Gulf Coast. And a couple bad centers here in the Northeast. I think some of them are just always high, like this one in Pennsylvania, up near Doylestown or Warrington, Pennsylvania. I think that's I think that's inaccurate. I don't know why that one is constantly always high, but generally not terrible. If you want to learn more about climate, weather, you know, and how that can impact your health as well, uh, I have a channel that is just nothing but climate and weather. We just posted 
right before this video, 24 minutes ago, we posted today's update where we're talking about a significant high risk threat of flooding for California. Yes, the forecast center has gone with high risk of excessive rainfall, meaning flooding is very likely in California tomorrow. All right, let's take a look at some data from the CDC on hospital capacity, and we want to see what's going on here. And we're just going to go randomly through the United States. It's Saturday. I don't have a lot of news. We just saw the news. I don't have any more news for you, so I figured, you know what, this is important. Let's see what the capacity levels are at some hospitals in the United States, on a statewide level, that is. Taking a look at the national level, 77.9% of hospital beds are in use, 3.2% is for COVID, 1.4% is for influenza, and taking a look at the ICU bed capacity, that's up to 73% uh, of beds being used right now, and so there's still 27% available, 3% of that's for COVID, 1.6% is for influenza. Now let's just randomly go through some states. Let's take a look at Alabama, shall we? And oh my, Alabama is over 80% at 80.8%. Once you start getting over 80%, I start getting concerned. Once you start getting over 85 to 90%, I start getting really concerned. You'll see about that in a little bit. Uh, COVID is 3.2% of the uh, bed usage, and 1.7% is for influenza. Let's see what's going on now in California. California is also right around 80%, 80.2%. 3.7% of that is because of COVID, and 1.1% is because of influenza. And we also should be looking at the ICU usage for each of these as well. And ICU usage is at 70%, 2.8% of that is COVID, and 1.1% is for influenza. All right, let's come down here to Connecticut. What's going on there? Connecticut is not as bad. 74.6% of all beds are in use. 3.8% uh, is because of COVID, 1.5% is for influenza, and the ICU usage, 71.5%, and COVID is 3.8% of beds being used. Influenza is at 1.5, or excuse me, 1.8% of the beds. I wish we could see how many uh, hospital beds there actually are in each state, but uh, we can't see that capacity level, at least not here. Maybe there's another way we can actually look that up one day, because back long ago, we used to be able to look at that. All right, Florida. Florida was up. Now it's dropped a little bit in Florida. It's down to 78.9% of all beds being used. COVID is at 3% of them. Influenza is at 1.1% of them. Let's now take a look at ICU usage in Florida. And you can see that is actually down a little bit. It was up to 76%. Now it has dropped down to 74%. 2.9% of that is because of COVID. 0.9% of that is for influenza. And let's just skip down here for a second. Rhode Island. I do not want to forget about Rhode Island. Rhode Island is constantly a problem for everything. ICU usage. 86.4% of beds being used. 2.5% is because of COVID. 2.1% is for influenza. But check this out. Inpatient bed use. It's still close to 90% in Rhode Island. It's at 89.5%. That is a really high percentage of beds being used. I wish someone somehow had some money and could open up another hospital in Rhode Island. They need it. COVID, 3.7% of the bed usage. Influenza is at 2.5%. All right, let's now go out to the West Coast again, and let's take a look at what's going on in Utah. How about there? And in Utah, we're seeing only 65% of the beds are being used. 2% are for COVID, 0.6% for influenza. This is some really good news. However, ICU usage, no, that's not high either. 67.5%, 2.4% of that is for COVID, 0.1% is for influenza, and let's just do one more state. Where should we go? How about we go to Illinois? Let's see what's going on there. ICU usage, 66.4%. COVID makes up 2.7% of that, and influenza is just 1% of that. Inpatient usage, let's see here. 72% of beds being used. That's not terrible. That's not bad at all. And... 2.8% of that is for COVID, and 1% is for influenza. We'll take a look at some more states uh, during the week. We're not going to take a look at any wastewater data today. Wastewater day will be tomorrow. And, of course, as you know, we're doing that special long COVID video tomorrow as well. Walgreens, you do know that the 
positivity rate dropped slightly this week, and the testing is up ever so slightly. For whatever reason, Walgreens won't load, so we'll just skip over that. And now let's take a look at what is going on with deaths. Deaths are rising from COVID in multiple states. You can see one of them out here is Arizona, Oklahoma, Mississippi, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, Puerto Rico, though it's not a state, deaths are rising for you. Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, New Hampshire, and there are some other states that are scattered in between that are still seeing rises in deaths from this winter surge of viruses. Hospital admissions for COVID, 22,636, and that is down by 10.9%. And when we take a look at epidemic status, we're going to take a look at influenza first. You can see here, there are still some places that are showing it growing or likely growing, which is why there are some flu markers, indicators that are saying, hey, wait a second, flu is starting to rise again in some places. And it's most notable in Florida, Texas, and Oklahoma, where you had initially peaked, and now it's showing here that you're starting to go up again. It's also showing things are starting to go up again in New York State as well, and likely going up in North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, and Arkansas, and also in Massachusetts. All right, moving on now. Here's the flu map. You can see here, it's still very high in uh, several places. It's also high in other places and moderate in the West Coast regions. And the Northeast, for the most part, is moderate. You do have a couple high areas, like Massachusetts is high, New Jersey is high, Pennsylvania is low at this time, Ohio, though, is high. And usually whatever happens in Ohio sometimes translates to what could happen in Pennsylvania. We'll have to keep an eye on that. And finally, taking a look now at the latest variant data, JN.1 makes up 93.1% of all cases. In Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia yesterday specifically, Philadelphia had 734 EMS incidents. And now let's take a look at what's going on. A live look in. Can't look at Montgomery County again. I've tried on several different computers. It just won't come up, but we can take a look now at what is going on in Chester County. Look at that. Not busy at all. Fall. An unconscious person, a stroke, abdominal pain, and respiratory difficulty. Yes, levels have slowed down in the Philadelphia burbs. Of course, we can't see what's going on in Montgomery County, so we don't really know what is going on there. Now taking a look at New Jersey, and in New Jersey we see that there are 888 hospitalizations, 69 out of 70 hospitals reporting on a Saturday. That's pretty good, and that's telling us, hey, this uh, dropping, it's legitimate in New Jersey. 45 people on a ventilator, in the ICU, 120, and discharges, 159 people got to go home on this Saturday in the state of New Jersey. All right, taking a look at New York State. New York State does not usually update on the weekend. Nope, did not. 3,192 people have tested positive on the most recent update, and hospitalizations in New York State are at 1,981. All right, we now get to take a look at a state we have not looked at before on their dashboard, anyhow, or in a long time. In the beginning days of the pandemic update, we used to do... Uh, Merdiva's website or something like that and they would have Kentucky but let's take a look at Kentucky on their state's website it says weekly update February 1st 2024 respiratory virus activity for influenza they're reporting it to be elevated respiratory virus activity for COVID-19 and RSV elevated and declining hospitalizations for respiratory illnesses are high so it's not good to see that they are still listing them at high at this time and now let's go over. We do have another state that we're going to take a look at. And this one is Virginia. And in Virginia, if we take a look at the charts here, you can see here, it looks like uh, emergency department visits for COVID-19 are dropping at this time. You can see on the chart, it did peak right around the New Year's. Right around the end of last year, coming into the start of this year was when it peaked. And it's been dropping ever since. And it continues to drop. And you also see here, that the trend in hospital admissions is down as well. So that is some really good news to see that things are starting to drop in Virginia. Yesterday, we did get the update from California, and we can see in California, all levels, not just COVID, not just influenza, but everything on this is dropping at this time, which is some really good news to see. All right, folks, that's all I have for today and to today's pandemic update. We will have another update again tomorrow. And of course, tomorrow morning, I am going to do that review of the long COVID study. It's going to be about an 8 to 10 minute video. Please look for that. It is very important that we continue to report on 
long COVID. Because in my opinion, long COVID is a pandemic of its own. I will see you guys all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe. Give this video a thumbs up if you learned anything. And subscribe down below. And of course, share this with anyone who needs to see it. Have a fantastic Saturday evening. See you all again tomorrow. Thanks for watching.